Good morning. Buenos días. Amigas y amigos de América Latina. Bienvenidos. The story of Indo-Latin American economic relations is a bit like the story of a typical Bollywood movie. <laughs> Three hours, three parts. The relations have evolved in three stages. In the first stage, 1950s, 60s, 70s, it was a period of mutual ignorance and indifference. I can assume the heroes and heroine hero doesn't look at each other. Second stage was 80s and 90s, when Latin America had transitioned from dictatorship to democracies, but was submerged in the new liberalistic Washington consensus. So at the time, the relations were tentative, occasional flirtation, one night stand. But since 2000, in the 21st century, it is mutual attraction, romance, love. Now, a Bollywood film, Romance and Love, has to have a song, right? There is this song, Seduce Me, Desa Me. Abrasame, amame. This is a song of La India. La India is the name of our country, La India. But the singer who sang this salsa song, her name is also La India, Puerto Rico, from Puerto Rico. Her original name is Linda Viera Caballero but she assumed the name of La India. Seduce me. Yeah. Yeah. When you are in love, you tend to overlook and ignore the negatives of your lover and exaggerate and <coughs> appreciate the positives, right? Now, I am going to highlight the positives of Indo-Latin American love story in economic relations, but without exaggeration. I will let some facts and numbers speak for themselves. I'll start with fact number one. India exports more to some Latin American countries than to close neighbors or some traditional trade partners. Last year, India exported $160 million to Uruguay, which is more than India's exports to Uzbekistan. Now, Uruguay is 15,000 kilometers away, with a Chiquito population of 3.4 million. And Uzbekistan is 3,000 kilometers away, with 31 million population. Last year, we exported $146 million to Honduras. Again, 15,000 kilometers away, in comparison to $121 million to the neighboring Cambodia, which is double the population of Honduras. And it's even more interesting our exports to Guatemala were $292 million. This is more than double than our exports to Cambodia. Last year, we did almost a billion dollars of exports to Colombia, which is more than our exports to a dozen European countries, Austria, Ireland, and so on. And we did $3.7 billion of exports to Mexico which is more than India's exports to the neighboring Thailand, Iran, Canada, 
Russia or Egypt. And last year we did almost a billion dollars of exports to Central America, six countries, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Panama, Costa Rica, and Nicaragua, six countries. One billion dollars in comparison to the six countries which form Central Asian Republic. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. We did a billion dollars to Central America. We did only $365 million to the Central uh, Asian Republics, which are just about two hours flight from there. Now my friends from Latin America will say, ah, oh, what about us? What about our exports to India? I have the numbers. Last year, Latin America exported $22 billion to India. India was the fourth largest export destination for Latin America after US, China, and Canada. But in 2014, India was the third largest destination for exports of the whole of Latin America. Today, India is more important for exports of Latin America than your traditional partners, Germany, France, Spain, Italy, UK, or Japan. You export more to India than to any of your traditional partners. Well, of course, you can always say numbers is not everything. It is not just the quantity. What about the quality? Yes. There is mutual value addition going beyond these abstract numbers. I'll just give you two examples. India exports about a billion dollars of generic pharmaceuticals to Latin America. This is not just dollars. It has helped the Latin American people, particularly the poor people, and the Latin American governments to reduce the cost of their health care. That is why Mr. Jose Serra, who was the health minister when I was there in Sao Paulo, he had invited Indian companies, including Renbaxi, to enter Brazilian market, not only to export generics from India, but to put pressure on the multinational corporations and the Brazilian companies to reduce the cost of their medicines and increase the proportion of generic medicines. That is the value. And 35% of India's exports to Latin America are industrial raw materials. APIs, active pharmaceutical ingredients, what's called as bulk drugs, organic chemicals, raw cotton, synthetic fibers. Now these help the Latin American manufacturing sector to reduce the cost of production and remain globally competitive. Now, my Indian friends would ask, what about the value addition of Latin America to India? Mm -hmm. It is even much more. Latin America contributes to India's energy and food security. We import about 15 to 20% of our crude oil from Latin America. Now with these Iran sanctions, we might import even more. Now this has helped India to reduce the over-dependence on the unstable Middle East and to strategic diversification. And crude oil is the number one export of Latin America. And number two, uh, the, the largest market for Latin American crude oil was United States. But United States is drastically reducing the import of oil. And India is the second largest importer of Latin American crude oil, much more than China. Now, Latin America can increase its exports from the current about 4 million barrels per day easily to about 8 million barrels per day. 
and India is going to need more of it. Now, we have been importing vegetable oil from Latin America. We are the number one importer of vegetable oil. Now, this has been particularly from Argentina, Brazil, and Paraguay. Now, this has helped India to reduce its over-dependence on Malaysia and Indonesia, from whom we import about 12 million tons of vegetable palm oil to reduce their over-dependence on these people and do strategic diversification. And there is something more. There is a long-term complementarity. In India, we have serious fundamental agricultural problems. We are losing every year hundreds of thousands of hectares of agricultural land to urbanization. And we have water problems. And we cannot dramatically increase the productivity with the investment because the, most of the farmers are small farmers. On the other hand, South America is blessed with a lot of arable land. You can bring in another 40 million hectares of land. And South America can easily feed another 500 million population outside the region. So there is this long-term complementarity and mutual value addition. Now, this mutual value addition is coming to even Bombay, to Bollywood. You know, in 2004, I got a strange invitation from Exim Bank. I was in Delhi. They sent me a ticket and asked me to come to Mumbai to watch a movie. I was, of course, thrilled. <laughs> and the name of the movie was Kaho Na Pyar Hai. Ritikesh Rush. Exim Bank had given credit to the producers to dub it in Spanish for showing it in Latin America. And they asked me to come and check the Spanish. How is it? But of course, that film didn't do well. And also, we learned a lesson that for uh, uh, films, feature films, it's better to have subtitles rather than dubbing. We learned. But then look at the value addition. Later, Prithikesh Roshan, who acted in that film, he got a heroine from Mexico, Barbara Mori. They had a film called Kites. And there is an Argentine music composer called Gustavo Santao Laja. He's famous in Hollywood. He composed the music for Amir Khan's Dobi Khan. And this year, they have released in Argentina an interesting film called Pensan de Aniel, Thinking of Him. This is a film about Tagore's visit to Buenos Aires and a bit of platonic romance with Victoria Ocampo. But the latest addition, value addition in this filmy world is for a boy from Motihari in Bihar. His name is Prabhakar Sharan. He, an right, adventurous young Indian, he went to Latin America and got stuck in Costa Rica. Well, to survive in Costa Rica, he fell in love with a Tika, Costa Rican girl. Married her. And the marriage didn't work out. Came back. And then went back again. This time he was lucky. He fell in love with someone with money. And she asked him, Dolly, what's your dream? What can I do for you? He said, I want to act in your film. So today, this Prabhaka Sharan from Motihari in Bihar, he has acted as hero in a Latin American Spanish film called Enredados la Confusion. <laughs> Entangle the Confusion. It's a Costa Rican film in Spanish. The heroine is a Costa Rican. And it's being shown across Latin America. So this is the first Latin American film done 
hundred percent Bollywood formula with all the songs and dance. Now he is making another film on human trafficking. And there is also value addition not only to Mumbai but to Rishikesh, the spiritual capital of India. You know, the Latin Americans have added value and taken Indian spiritualism to the next level. I'll give you two examples. In Buenos Aires, there's a nightclub in which a group called Yoga Rail, they, the band plays once a month. It's a full-fledged nightclub. There are about seven, eight hundred teenagers, adolescents, young people. But what happens there is something different. Because this yoga rave group sings in pure Sanskrit. But in rock, pop, hip hop, reggaeton, in all styles. And when this band plays, there is only vegetarian food, samosa, no non-vegetarian no alcohol, no drugs, no smoking, no etc. And in between these songs, they advise the audience to do poses of yoga and meditation. Now, this is amazing because in India, can you imagine getting 600 young teenagers to do this? without alcohol in a nightclub when you sing in Sanskrit? Isn't it amazing? But even more amazing is another Brazilian. His name is Janderson Fernandes do Oliveira from Sao Paulo. He got married at the age of 30. And then for his honeymoon, he came to India with his Brazilian wife. They went around India. And we didn't like it very much. The dirt, poverty. Someone suggested, why don't you see Rishikesh as the last stop? So they started going to Rishikesh from Haridwar. Just climb up. They're going in an ambassador car. And this Fernandez de Oliveira while going up in the road to Rishikesh, he started getting vibrations, which was more than the vibrations of the ambassador car. <laughs> and when he reached Rishikesh, they took him to an ashram called Satchadam Ashram. And there was a guru, and they introduced him. And when he saw the guru, then he remembered he used to have dreams in which an old wise man with a white beard used to appear in the backdrop of a mountain. Then he realized that this was the same guru who used to appear in his dreams. He fell on his feet, surrendered himself, and looked at his wife and said, Ciao, bye bye. He renounced marriage. He became a celibate. He underwent rigorous, rigorous training in Indian spiritualism. And the Guru is an authentic ashram and authentic Guru. He was so impressed by the dedication and authenticity of this Brazilian. He anointed him as the fifth Guru. So, Janand, uh, 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 Fernandez de Oliveira was named as Sri Prem Baba. Sri Prem Baba. You can go into the website and see. Uh, today, he has ashrams in 12 countries. Brazil, Argentina, Israel, United States, and Europe. He is a jet-setting guru. Imagine, Sri Prem Baba a Brazilian interpreting and disseminating Indian spiritualism across the world. That's a great value addition we appreciate.
Well, to conclude, the Chinese, they have a target for Latin America. $500 billion of trade by 2025, $250 billion of investment. This was announced in 2015 by the Chinese president. They have already invested $120 billion. And they have already given credit of $150 billion. So I tell our Indian friends, why don't we also have a target for 2025? Why don't we take our exports from the current $12 billion to $25 billion by 2025? And take the overall trade from the current $34 billion to $100 billion by 2025? And investment to 20, uh, 20 or $25 billion by 2025? and credit, we mentioned about $400 million. Now the Chinese are given $150 billion. Why don't we take this credit to say $5 billion by 2025? And there is an opportunity. Prime Minister Modi is going to Buenos Aires for the G20 summit. Maybe that's an opportunity to make this big announcement of our vision of 2025 for Indo-Pacific. Uh, Latin American economic relations. I have a final word for my friends in India who do business with Latin America. Don't worry about all those figures of negative growth and so on. The, the, the only risk of doing business with Latin America is falling in love. Thank you. <laughs>